<laughs> Mark the ninth chapter. Amen. Starting at the 14th verse. Amen. When they returned to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd surrounding them. And some teachers of the religious law were arguing with them. When the crowd saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with awe and they ran to greet him. What is all this arguing about? Jesus asked. One of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, Teacher, I have brought my son so you could heal him. He is possessed by an evil spirit that won't let him talk. And whenever the spirit seizes him, it throws him violently to the ground. Then he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast out the evil spirit, but they couldn't do it. Jesus said to them, you faithless people, the King James Version say, oh faithless generation, how long must I be with you, suffer with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought the boy, but when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the child into a violent convulsion and he fell to the ground, writhing and foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening? Jesus asked the boy's father. He replied since he was a little boy. Verse 22, the spirit often throws him into the fire or into the water trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. What do you mean if I can? Jesus asked, anything is possible if a person believe, and I believe the King James Version says all things are possible to them that believe. Verse 24, the father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. And when Jesus saw the crowd of onlookers was growing, he rebuked the evil spirit. Said, listen, you spirit that makes this boy unable to hear and speak, I command you to come out of the child and never enter him again. Then the spirit screamed and threw the boy into another violent convulsion and left him. The boy appeared to be dead. And a murmur ran through the crowd as the people said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and helped him to his feet. And he stood up. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of his word. Amen. And I just want to just one more time. Amen. Read for emphasis. Just the 23rd verse. What do you mean if I can? Jesus asked. Anything is possible if a person believes amen you all may be seated in the presence of the lord i just want to speak to you today amen from the subject you can help me say it say just believe, just believe. amen just believe and this account tells the story of a young man who had a serious condition and on the surface it may have seemed to be one thing but it was really something spiritual underlying it whether you realize it or not and i'm not here to teach about demonology but demons are real Amen. The devil is real. Amen. But on the surface, he appeared normal. But the Bible said at certain times that the spirit would seize him and he would fall to the ground, go into convulsions, foam at the mouth as though some unseen force was trying to destroy him and it would often throw him into the water and throw him into the fire and you wondered and we've read the scripture of the Bible declares that the thief cometh not but to kill to steal and to destroy and that is exactly what the devil was trying to do with this young man and this young man had a father and like most parents if we have a child that is unwell whether it be a a, a sickness whether it be a, 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 a uh, uh, some type of infirmity, whether it be uh, one of my children that su was a, a terrible sufferer of allergies, whatever it is, our one desire for our children because we love them is just to see them well. 
And like any parent, like any father, this man wanted to see his son free of this condition. And so the father had heard, you got to understand, we know about Jesus, and we understand the works of, of Jesus, and we read and we studied him, but he was something new on the scene. Uh, and you know how people do when something's new and they don't understand it? They talk about it. Amen. Uh, when we first started the church, and we knew we'd been going 11 years now, but when we first started, uh, people were talking about me uh, because they didn't, well, they said he got mad, and uh, they said he left, and oh, and this happened, and he didn't get to preach enough, and none of that stuff was true. And they said, oh, they said, oh, all the members at his church and we had six people sitting here and so it was just a whole lot of talking going on and when Jesus is day he here's his ragtag bunch of people following this man around think about how crazy this sounded following a man around who claimed to be God's son and they talked as though they, they might there was something they couldn't deny and they couldn't quite understand because though they didn't like it, uh, though he was controversial, though he was not well liked, there was something that happened that followed this man. Uh, somebody say miracles, miracles. Signs, signs, and wonders. Oh my God, talk as though they might, the, they wanted to. Uh, the dead were being raised around this group of people. Uh, sick bodies were being healed. Uh, demons were being cast out. People were being saved. And so there was some evidence that just maybe this man Jesus wasn't as crazy as they thought. Uh, but you know what? People would talk as much as they want till they need help. And the Bible said that this man was desperate. And so he'd heard about this uh, ragtag group of people, these disciples, they called him, this man Jesus. And, he, and someone may have told him, hey, if you got a demon, I heard, if you go to those people, they can help you. Uh, and so he brought his uh, son to them. Uh, and the disciples was his first stop. And the Bible said he brought his son and, and, and handed them, him over and said, they probably explained his condition and said do something about him. Uh, they said that you are demon busters, we'll bust this demon. Uh, and you know, and the Bible said that try as though they might. They couldn't get that demon to come out of him. Lord help me today. Uh, they couldn't get the demon to come out of him. And the Bible said that in that moment that a crowd began to gather. And the scribes who didn't like Jesus were in the crowd. And I'm sure that they were probably railing accusations and said, I, I thought y'all had some power. Uh, and why couldn't you help this man? And, and the Bible said they began questioning them. And right at that moment, say, he may not come when you want him. Oh, but he'll be there right on time. And right as the, as the, as the noise began to reach a, a fever pitch and things were probably getting ready to get out of control, Jesus walked up and said, why are y'all questioning my disciples? And the father of the boy spoke up out of the crowd and said, my son is grievously vexed of the devil. And I brought him to your disciples to cast the devil out of him and they couldn't help him. Uh, you know, this was the first uh, may I speak to your manager moment, if you know what I'm talking about. Anybody ever been there? Huh? You can't help me, let me talk to the manager. And so the daddy said, listen, your disciples couldn't cast the devil out, and I want to see what you can do. And the Bible said that Jesus responded and said, oh, faithless generation, how long must I suffer with you? How long must I put up with you. Haven't I been with you long enough and not only told you and taught you and demonstrated how to operate in the power of God, but I had don't, I gave you some power. He said, oh faithless generation. And though Jesus was talking about them, can I tell you that that applies to this generation as well? Amen. Oh my God. A faithless generation because I look at all oh, this is a generation that's unlike no other uh, we have electric vehicles and we have self-driving cars and uh, we have commercial flights to outer space we have crypto and digital currency and Bitcoin and technology has gone to places that we never dreamed of do you not know that I was at work at my job and I was thirsty and I didn't have any change in my uh, in my pocket in my, my wallet and I took my cell phone out and I have something on my cell phone called Apple Pay and I waved my cell phone 
in front of the vending machine and paid for my Coke and the Coke came out the machine. And the same day, a charge for a dollar and 50 cents showed up on my credit card that was linked to my cell phone. I'm not kidding you. I can pay for my groceries on my cell phone by waving in the front of things. Technology has gone to place, places that we never dreamed of. You can get on your phone and send out a text message and order your food in Grubhub or uh, DoorDash uh, will show up to your door and deliver your order to you. At my job, we have a, uh, what do you call those people? We have a cashier, a, a, a no cashier, cashier list, I guess, a store where you walk in, take your items off the shelf. Am I right, Brother Hank? There's no cashier in the store. You take your items off, there's cameras everywhere now, mind you. Uh, but <laughs> they ain't crazy. Uh, but you walk in, you take your items off the shelf, your snack, your, they got coffee, they got hot dogs, they got sandwiches, they, they got microwaves, you can even warm your stuff up. Walk over to a kiosk, scan it and walk out. And bag your own stuff and walk out. And so technology has gone to levels that we never imagined. But can I tell you, faith is at an all time low. Amen. I, I saw an article, a statistic from Forbes magazine, April of 2022, it said Christians are decreasing as more U.S. adults are not affiliated with any religion. It said according to the study, listen to this, 75% of Americans identified as Christians in 2011 and said in 2021, just 10 years later, that number has shrunk to 63%. And said in 10 years, roughly 18% of Americans were not affiliated with any type of religion and identified as agnostic or atheist or nothing at all. And now it went from 18% to 29%. So much unbelief. This is the world we live in. And you wonder why we're in the condition that we're in. And people look and say, I can't believe there's been 300 mass shootings in the United States of America in 2022 alone. I can believe it. Amen. This is the condition that we're in. So much unbelief. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe in going to church. I don't have any particular faith at all. But this is the thing that I've learned. And here's an observation. Because people are bold in their unbelief. I know some of my relatives, people say, I've evolved beyond the church. That's what they say now, you know. I, I beyond, I'm at another level now. You're so deep, you just, they lost yourself. But here's the thing that I've learned. This is the observation because people are so bold in their disbelief. They'll get in your faith and say, I don't need God. I don't need church. That's a crutch. That's what they say. That's a crutch. That's, a, you know, hey, that's an antiquated. Get away with that mess. But this is the thing that I've observed. People are real bold. In their disbelief until they get desperate. Amen. There's a preacher by the name of Jesse DePlanis. Some of y'all, some of y'all heard of him. Amen. And Jesse DePlanis, oh, you real bold in your disbelief until you're in need. And Jesse DePlanis said that he was flying commercial airline, flying to preach somewhere, and he said the plane that I was flying in got struck by lightning. He said the pilot came on and said, I'm, "We're going to have to make." an emergency landing because there's something wrong with the plane. And Jesse DePlanta said the plane was full. It was packed to capacity. He said, I stood up. People were panicking, crying. I just want to make it home to my wife. I want to see my kids again. Oh, God. And, all. and Jesse DePlanta, the man of God, said, I stood up in my seat in the aisle. He said, I'm a preacher of the gospel. And I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm on this plane. And so it's not going down. And if you don't mind, I would like to lead us in a word of prayer. And Jesse the planet said, listen, I know there were probably some atheists on that plane. 
And he said, I know there are probably some agnostics on that plane. I know there were probably some Hindus on that plane. I, I, I know there were probably some Buddhists on that plane. He said, but when I started praying, he said, nobody objected and said, I don't believe in Jesus. I, and nobody said, don't you pray in that name. But he said, as I began to pray, and I said, in the name of Jesus, he said, I heard everybody said, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. And Jesus, Lord, help us. Because there's a saying that said that in the foxhole, they're talking about in the war, they said in the foxhole there's no such thing as an atheist. Oh, because when you have a need, listen, you may not believe in God, but you're going to find you somebody to call on that's higher than you are. So much disbelief, but when you get desperate, it'll make you seek for the divine. Listen. Ooh, I heard about God and I never prayed to this God oh but I found out isn't it amazing people who don't believe in God that when things happen they say oh my God I said I want you to believe in him listen but when you get desperate and this man was desperate and he had a need and he said listen I heard about this man named Jesus and I don't know if half of what I heard is true and I don't know if he really is the son of God I don't know that he, if he can heal the sick but that's one thing I do know I need some help anybody ever been there today listen you don't have to have an equation and one plus one doesn't have to equal two and nobody has to explain it to you and lay it out but when you need help you just say just point me in the right direction you just tell me where to go tell me what to do I, I don't have any questions because guess what I just need some answers and this man uh, knew all he knew was I need my son to be made well and so the Bible says that he brought him to the ones that he believed could help and they couldn't handle it and Jesus showed up looked like right on time and Jesus asked him a simple question he said all I want to know is how long has he been this way and I could ask some of y'all this question today how long have you been this way? Come on. Some of y'all dealing with some stuff in your lives right now. How long have you been in that situation? How long have you been carrying that burden? And here's the thing that I ask about God, that I know about God. Sometimes people want to get in your business and they just want to get into your business just to be in it. And you say, oh, I've been dealing with this for 20 years. Oh, what a shame. But this is the thing that I've learned about God. When God inquires, He's not simply inquiring just because he wants to know. But he said, I intend to do something about it. So he asked him, how long has your son been this way? He said, since he was a child, because this was a young man. Since he was a child, he's been suffering. And can I tell you today, it does not matter how long you've suffered. Huh? It doesn't matter how long you've been burdened. It doesn't matter how long you've been carrying it around. God said, I can fix it. Oh, you don't want to believe that. I can do, oh my God. I can do what the doctors can't do. Hello, woman with the issue of blood. Bible said for 12 years, the flow of her blood had not ceased. And she lost everything she would had and spent everything she had and listened to this and had suffered at the hands of many physicians. There are some quack doctors out there. And tried everything she knew but the Bible said she was nonetheless, she was no better for it. Oh my God. But I've learned that when God, when man reaches his extremity, it's God's opportunity. He said, how long have you been dealing with this? How long has this been going on? How long have you not been able to, I'm talking to somebody in here today. How long have you not been able to sleep at night? Come on. How, how long have you had to take Xanax and, and Prozac? Come on. Adderall. I don't know what all these medications are. Huh? How long have you had to suffer with that? How long have you had no joy? How long have you had no peace in your life? I said, how long has he been like this? And I just believe that Jesus was not merely asking because there's something when down on the inside when you know that the power of God can do, there's a righteous indignation that rises up and says, why have you been like this this long? How long has he been like this? And nobody's been able to, to heal. Nobody's been able to help him. That's why Jesus, when he showed up on the scene, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon 
me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to open blinded eyes, to set at liberty them that abuse. In other words, I come to make stuff right. Hello. Woo. I come to set stuff in order. Why has he been like this this long? It's a shame. Don't you know that something that we're suffering with and some things that we're dealing with, God looks and says, how long have you been like this? Why are you putting up with this? Why are you dealing with it? How long has he suffered like this? Brought him to his disciples and he said, give them to me, Lord. I believe there's some churches that are just like the disciples. Quaking and shaking and no power, Lord. How long has he been like this? Said since he was a boy. Said that spirit seizes him and throws him into the fire. And he said, but if you can, listen, help my son. And he has listened to this. He said, help my son. If you can, do something for him. If you can. And Jesus said, what do you mean? If I can. See, because there's nothing more insulting than to have somebody doubt your ability. Anybody ever been there before? You, you, you know when they're doubting you. They come in. Would you bake me a pound cake? If you can. What do you mean, if I can? What do you mean if I can? Deacon Claude and Deacon Duhart and some of y'all that do construction, huh? And Brother Wayne, I know he, you know, can you paint this building for me? Hang some sheetrock, floating tape, if you can. Say, wait, what do you, if I know what I am capable of, it's almost like you want to say, do you know who you talking to? It's nothing like how, there was a somebody I, I know that there's probably nobody in here who does not know who Oprah Winfrey is. I saw a story a few years ago. She said that she was in Italy and she didn't have her face on. You know, y'all ladies know what I'm talking about. She said I was vacationing in Italy and I didn't have my makeup on and I was dressed down and I had a big hat on and she said and I had some shades on and Oprah said I walked into a shop in Italy and I was shopping and she said and I was looking around really nice shop and Oprah said I was looking around and perusing and she said and I told the employee at the shop would you take that bag up there would you take that bag down and let me look at it? And she said, the man was like, no, 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 no. He said, no, 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 no. And she said, I want to see that bag. I don't see anything down here that I want. Would you please give me that bag right there? And take it down so that I can look at it. I want to, might want to purchase it. And she said, this Italian man said, no, 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 no. And he said, those are some of our most expensive bags. And so you may not, I think it'd be better if you would just look at these right here. He didn't know who he was talking to, see? Because she said, that's fine. She left and she went back to the United States. She said she was on her show talking about the experience and she got a call from Italy. And they said, please forgive us, come back and we'll let you shop and do whatever. And she said, no, that's okay because he didn't know that the person that he was speaking to could not only afford to buy the bag, but could have bought the whole shop. Listen, oh my God. And I believe that we treat God the same way. Oh my God. Lord, I, my son is crazy right now. And, and he's worse than he's ever been. And I've been praying and I believe that, that you can change his life. And, and I'm asking you to do something for him, Father. If you can, Lord, help me today. God, you know that I have a 
need and I just received a bill in the mail for a hundred and fifty dollars and they say that you are a way maker and they say that you're a miracle worker and they say that a cattle on a thousand hills belong to you and I just need you to open this door if you can and God looks at us and say what do you mean if I can don't you know who I am oh my God don't you know what I can do have you not seen my power oh my God and you're talking about the God that split the Red Sea oh my God you're talking about the God that healed the sick and raised the dead Lord and if a man can be in his grave and stinking and rigor mortis is setting in and the bugs are beginning to eat his flesh and a man speaks and in my name that man comes leaping out more alive than he's ever been and you don't think that I can heal a headache what do you mean if I can I can do any this is his word I can do anything but fail oh my God all power is in my hand we're talking about the almighty God the all powerful God are uh, the same God that looked out into space and said I want to see something called light and light didn't exist and some folks will look and say that's crazy that's an impossibility you are insane but God said let there be light and guess what light came forth oh my God oh my God you're talking about a God that looked on the void and the blackness down and said the darkness was on the face of the deep and he said I want to call man forth and nothing had ever it existed called mankind but because he spoke and he cannot lie and he can do anything but fail he spoke and look here you are sitting here looking at me from the dust of the ground whatever he says will be what do you mean if I can if I'm able I'm more than able oh my God I'm more than able Ephesians 3 and 20 said now unto him I'm talking about God now now unto him that is what that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us I'm talking about that same power that raised Jesus from the dead that same power that brought Lazarus forth now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think what do you mean if I can said if I can oh my God and Jesus said if I can and you if you don't get nothing else I want you to get this and Jesus answered and said if I can he said all A-L-L -L, that means anything all things sickness all things disease all things poverty all things huh ailments of your mind all things your financial need all things the needs you have for your children all things the needs that you have for your family all things the things that you've been praying about all things the things that you've been worried about he said all things are possible but you don't know what I'm dealing with. He said all things. Oh, pastor, you're talking and that sounds real good. But you don't know my personal situation. He said all things. And it doesn't matter what it is. All means all and it covers all. He said all things. I don't care how bad it is. You serve a God that specializes in the impossible, the improbable. All things are possible to them. I'm not talking to everybody now. Got to qualify this. He said, All things are possible. Let me qualify it to them that believe. Oh my God. 
Do you believe? Oh my God. He said all things. Here it is. All things are possible. To them. That believe. Oh my God. And I find it interesting. That Jesus used those exact words. Because 30 years before Jesus was even born, an angel of the Lord appeared to a young lady that was chosen to be his mother. And he told her, you will conceive and bring forth a son and his name shall be called Jesus. And he said, in a matter of fact, not only will you conceive, but your cousin Elizabeth, who people have said is barren and can't have children, she's six months pregnant right now. And Mary looked and said, how can these things be? How can I bring forth a child and I've never known a man? Oh my God. The Bible said that the angel looked at her over in Luke first chapter, right around the 37th verse. And the angel said, I'll tell you how such things can be. Oh, it sounds crazy. How that old woman who's past childbearing years and everybody's known that she couldn't have children. And she was infertile. I'll tell you how she's six months pregnant right now. And young lady, I'll tell you how you who've never known a man and who's a virgin is going to conceive. And how your child will save the world from their sins. Some people say, how can such things be? said how can these things be and the angel said Luke in 1 and 37 said for with God nothing shall be impossible he didn't there's the key he said he didn't say with man listen I'm limited I'm, I'm financially limited I'm physically limited there's only so much I can do listen but he said I didn't say with man man can only go with you so long listen if you need to borrow twenty dollars today I got you you hear me I got you maybe a hundred and I can stretch it maybe reach over in my savings and get you two hundred huh but three thousand we can't talk all right we done right about there <laughs> some of y'all say listen twenty dollars is a push for me I'm sorry with man only some things are possible but Jesus said Mary, you want to know how you're going to conceive? Said, for with God, nothing is impossible. And this same God, his power is going to overshadow you. Oh my God. And that that shall be conceived in you shall be of the Holy Ghost. For with God, oh my God, nothing, no thing shall be impossible. And that's a lot of our problems. We've been looking at man. And that's the standard we set. Huh? You said, well, the bank said they can only loan me $10,000. Oh, I'm preaching by myself now. The bank said that they can only no, loan me $10,000. And I need more than that. But the bank is run by a man. And the CEO of a bank is a man. And, and the, lo the loan officers is a man, a woman, mankind. Huh? They're limited. But God is not limited. And I'm here to tell you, oh my God, you've been setting your standards too low because you've been looking at what man can do for you. And man can only do so much, but God can do greater. Oh my God. I far exceed what a man can do for you. Oh my God. As a matter of fact, I'll go above and beyond. Let them, listen to the thing, God loves it. Let them make their prediction for you. Huh? Let them lay it out and let them make their promises to you. And God loves it when they do that. Because the doctor can say, listen, according to my, uh, my, my chart here, and according to the test that we run, you've got three months to live. And God said, well, that's just wonderful. Now let me show you what I can do. seen God get involved and the doctor say I don't even know how you alive uh, Bishop Luther oh my God God is such a powerful God they put the man on hospice I'm talking about a man of God I said now with God now put the man on hospice and he's been on hospice for six years he said that the hospice nurses show up now and they have coffee with them because they don't know what to do and they said according to the numbers we see here this man shouldn't be alive but with God all things are possible 
the God of the impossible said all things are possible. Jesus said, if you just believe. And he looked at that boy who had been tormented and vexed of the devil for so many years and he said, come out of him and don't you ever go back into him. The Bible said in that moment the demons cried out and he fell down as dead. And there go man again. Oh, he's dead. Jesus said, no, he's not. Grabbed his hand and said, get up from there. Ain't that how he works? <laughs> and they marveled. That's why we say he's a marvelous God. And they marveled. How can this be for with God? But we tried. Psychologists, oh, we did therapists. We did medication. And in a moment, look what Jesus was able to do. Said, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. And all things, y'all say it with me, all things. Everything you could possibly imagine that some of you dealing with right now falls under that category. All things are possible if you would just believe. You don't have a money problem. You got a faith problem. Oh my God. Y'all don't have to hear me today. That's the problem. He said, if you just believe, God said, I can do all things. And all I'm asking you to do is supply the belief. That's your part of the equation. Do you believe that I can? Do you believe that I can? You supply the belief and I'll take care of the rest. All things are possible to them that believe. Sometimes we need to say, Lord, I believe. And this is what I want you to do. Help thou my unbelief. Oh my God. Oh, because it creeps up. I've been there. And you get ready just like Peter. He said, Can I? Is that you? Jesus? He said, Yeah. Can I walk on the water? Do you believe you can? Yeah. Well, come on out. Now, that don't make sense. Man is not made to walk on water. But because he believed, guess what? He stepped out the boat and his co-workers, his friends, his buddies were probably watching him and said, this fool getting ready to sink. Get the life preserver. Get the ropes ready because we're going to pull them in. And the Bible said to Peter, because he believed, stepped out the boat and, and instead of sinking he started walking he believed but here came unbelief the wind blew he said wait a minute hold on a minute the lightning flashed <laughs> and something in his head said you're not supposed to be out here and his belief began to falter and the Bible said he started to sink and Jesus who still believed, walked over to him and grabbed him by his hand and said, oh, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? You were doing it. And as long as you believe, you were doing the impossible. All things are possible to them that believe. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you this, what I know. This is what I know. And you can leave here and roll your eyes and oh, whatever. I'm going to tell you what I know. God has not stopped working miracles. Amen. I'm going to tell you what I know. God has not stopped saving. Amen. I'm going to tell you what I know. God has not stopped healing. God has not stopped feeling. God has not stopped casting out devils. Do you know what has happened? You just stopped believing. Oh my. You know we teach our kids about Santa Claus. I didn't, excuse me. Some people teach their kids about Santa Claus and the tooth fairy. And kids get up, they leave cookies. Before they go to bed at night and they write out their list. You know, 
But at a certain age, they stopped writing lists and mailing letters to the North Pole. Mimi told me a couple of years ago, and I never told her she watches cartoons, but Mimi told me a couple of years ago, I need a piece of paper and I need an envelope. I said, you do? She said, yes, I need to write a letter. I said, to who? To Santa. And I said, now, we didn't teach her this stuff. So I said, I said, really? Yes. And I said, where does Santa live? In the North Pole. I said, okay. And so she got her letter out and she wrote her letter and put it in an envelope and we humored her. And I took it out, <laughs> put it in the mailbox, you know. But at a certain age, kids stop writing letters to Santa. At a certain age, they stopped leaving a tooth under the pillow. I remember one year when Madison was little. Uh, now, we did do the tooth fairy. Uh, uh, her tooth fell out, and she, <laughs> and I don't know who told me. Anyway, uh, the tooth fell out, and so she put her, her, her tooth under the pillow. And I had gotten home late night, one night from work, and it was getting close to morning. And, and I said, oh, Lord, I said, I've got to put money under her pillow. And so I snuck into her room, and I, I had on my, uh, my boxer shorts, and I stuck into her room, and I put the money under her pillow, and I snuck out. And in the morning, Madison got up, and she found her money, and she came in there, and I remember Madison said, Daddy. And I said, what? She said, I saw the tooth fairy last night. And I said, <laughs> I said, you did? She said, yeah, he had brown legs. I said, oh. <laughs> but at a certain age, they stopped writing letters and they stopped leaving money or the tooth under the pillow. You know why? Because they stopped believing in that. But God is not Santa Claus and God is not the tooth fairy and God is not a unicorn, he's real, oh my God. He is a God of the Bible, he is he who was and is and he is to come. He is Alpha and Omega, he's the beginning and the end. And his power is the same today as it was back then. He can do the same kind of miracles. So it's not a matter if if I can, but if you can believe, that's it. It's not a matter of if he can, but if you can believe, all things are possible to them that believe. Amen. Just believe. You don't have to worry. You don't have to lose sleep at night. You don't have to fret about it. Just believe. Can I testify? You don't have to get a lawyer. I had about three situations in my life where people told me you need to lawyer up. You need to call an attorney. And God said leave it alone. And people told me you're crazy. But can I tell you, and they used to tell us he's a lawyer in the courtroom. And I can testify he's never lost a case. Oh my God. And he'll represent you pro bono. Oh my God. You don't need a lawyer. All you need is to believe. All things are possible to them that believe. Amen. That might be someone here today. Amen. That may desire prayer. I'm not going to delay the hour. Amen. Someone desires prayer. And just believe all things are possible. To them that believe, amen. He said, if you two or three would touch and agree on anything in earth, it shall be done. You bind it on earth, amen. And believe that it is bound in earth. Guess what? He said, I'll bind it in heaven. If you loose it on earth and believe, he said, it's loosed in heaven. And it shall be done unto you if you would just believe. All things are possible. If there's someone here that desires prayer, I'm not going to. Amen. Someone here. Amen. Someone that desires prayer, whatever your need is. Amen. I pray with you today. Yes, ma'am. God, when my heart is overwhelmed, ask the 
And amen. Let me tell you something, young lady. Hey, come back. Amen. She said she wanted God to increase her faith. Amen. And let me tell you something. Now, they used to tell us, and don't pray for patience. And I'm not, listen to what I'm saying. Because if you pay for patience, guess what? Here come some trials. Because this is how God builds us. So let me tell you what I know. And look at me. Look at me. Let me tell you what I know because of what I've had to go through. This is how God increases faith. He sends things your way that cause you and force you to believe him. I'm talking about impossible things. I'm talking about showing you a building and then saying, oh, guess what? You, almost, you need about $100,000 to do what you need to do with that building. And you don't know where it's going to come from. Well, guess what? This is how your faith gets built. You say, well, Lord, I need $100,000. And then when he comes through, you say, well, hey. If God can do 100,000, I can believe him for 200,000. So the Lord is going to begin to do some things in your life. Look at me. He's going to be do, begin to do some things in your life that are going to require faith. And I'm telling you what I know. Look at me, young lady. Look at me. I'm telling you what I know. There are going to be things that are going to seem impossible. They're going to seem improbable. You're going to say, I can't do this. And God's going to say, that's why I sent it your way. Because I'm going to do it for you. All right? So he's going to give you the desire of your heart. He's going to increase your faith, but I'm telling you, it's how it's going to come. And when those things come, Maya, when those things come, believe him, okay? He will not fail you. I'm telling you what I know, okay? All right, you can go back to see that. Amen. Yes, ma'am. She's believing God for healing. Now, here's the thing that I know because she's got a point of reference. You are looking before you right now. You're looking at a young lady who was a severe asthmatic. I'm talking about breathing treatments. What was that thing called? Nebulizer. Nebulizer, the little pumps. The weather would change. She couldn't go outside, almost died several times. And at six years old, seven years old, we were in church and she told my mama, I'm tired of being sick. She went forth and the pastor said, well, little girl, she said, I want God to heal me from asthma. And he said, little girl, I remember because I was there. And he looked down at her and said, do you believe that? And she said, yes, I do. Yes. Touched and agreed. She's 35 now. Asthma. What's that? Almost 35. I'm sorry to me to tell your age. Amen. And from that day forward, asthma gone. Oh, y'all see, y'all don't believe that. I'm not talking about outgrew it. I'm not talking. Well, it just, I'm not talking about outgrew it. Out medicated it. Gone. Oh uh, yeah. From that day to this. And so she has a point of reference. And she knows what God can do. So I'm just touching and agreeing with her faith. We believe in God. Jesus. According to her faith, it is so. And we come against this infirmity. You made this body. You know this body. And we speak everything be set in order now. Whatever deficiencies will have to come up in the name of Jesus. And we speak healing 
from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet it is done every name must come subject to the name of Jesus and I speak healing right now healing virtue flow 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 right now and it is so and it is done in Jesus name we pray hallelujah in Jesus name we pray and as he said to that young man that that spirit would not enter him ever again and it is done this infirmity is gone in Jesus name never again hallelujah 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 situation you're working right now ah, yes. oh, my son. I touch and agree with this young man right now I believe you to be the God of the Bible just as he just said I believe you can do anything but fail I believe that you can do the impossible and we're believing you for the impossible even in this situation God you begin to work and you move right now Lord break up the follow ground right now Lord every hindrance every stronghold you break it up right now and I'm trusting you and we're believing you to work it out we're trusting you to work it out God and we accept your will let your holy will be done right now your work right now father we're trusting and we believe in you to do what only you can do and we thank you right now we believe you right now in Jesus mighty name we pray amen let me tell you something every situation that I've ever trusted God for as a matter of fact that's something I'm believing God for right now and guess what I'm not telling anybody in this place it's between you and God and listen to what I'm saying stop talking about it you hear me stop talking about it stop complaining about it stop belly aching about it I, even this situation with this building that we've been dealing with I had to stop myself from talking about that woman Lord and look what God has done I didn't know how he was going to die here. Oh my sake. Glory to your name. I didn't know how he was going to do it. I didn't know when he was going to do it. But I believed that he was going to do it. And every month, listen to what I'm telling you. Every month I would sit at my kitchen table and write out the check for the lease and put it in the mailbox and I would say, God, I, be, I would take my anointed oil and anoint the check and say, I'm believing that one day this is going to be the last check that I'm going to have to send. And guess what? Nine years later, at the beginning of this month, I wrote out the last check. But when I stopped talking about it, when I stopped worrying about it, that's when he worked it out. So whatever your burden is, whatever your complaint is, because people can't do anything about it. I've learned. I hear people all day talking to their co-workers. Man, let me tell you what my wife did. Man, let me tell you what my husband did. And you know what those people do? They get through talking and they say, man, you ought to hear what he's going through. Man, he said his wife did this or his her husband did this and all of that. They can't do nothing about the same thing you do. Talk about it. But take it to the one. And I'm telling you, because guess what when he does it nobody else can say well I gave them some advice and I told him what to do I told him how to go about it 
when God does what he does there's only one thing that will be able to be said to God be the glory for the things that he has done and sometimes that's the hardest thing to do is not talk about it and not complain about it but I'm telling you what I know you take it to the Lord and you leave it there and when people ask go oh, how's how's that going I'm just trusting God hey well what's going on I'm just trusting God well has that happened yet oh no I'm sure has it turned around yet no I'm just trusting God I'm believing God and that's your answer I am believing God you hear me I'm believing God believe God trust God leave it in his hands okay amen God come on Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Amen. Well, lift your hands and tell them thank you. God, we thank you right now. Lord, we thank you right now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you right now. I thank you for this family. A family that you orchestrated and you put together. You knew the end from the beginning. Lord, you orchestrated this situation. This is you. And so I thank you right now that you're working in this situation. You're moving right now in this situation. And we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise, give you praise. Give you praise for what you're doing. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. And so we thank you for what is. We thank you for what was, and we thank you for what shall be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. Amen. We're getting ready to go home. Yes, ma'am. Come on. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you already know what it is. Yes. Amen. You already know what it is. Uh, I've said this oftentimes before. The enemy tries to block us at our point of destiny. In other words, when he sees you headed in the direction of where you should be going. Uh oh, they're getting ready to go to church. I'm going to put an obstacle in their way. Oh, they're getting ready to go to prayer. Let me bog them down. And that's all it is. And the same way God dealt with that, he's going to deal with it. It's the enemy. When I started the church, I was, didn't know where I was going, but I was headed in the right direction. The day that I got ready, as a matter of fact, my wife can tell you, I was a member of the old church and I wrote my letter of resignation at work on the computer and I saved the file on my computer. And I hadn't made up my mind to leave. The week that I made up my mind to print out, and I printed out my resignation letter and I said in two weeks I'm going to hand this in to my pastor. That week, literally all hell broke loose. You hear me? I'm talking about a brand new truck and the and, and started leaking gas from the gas tank out of nowhere both of my children with a day apart fell and needed stitches Madison over her eye Maya behind her ear and it was just crazy stuff the air conditioner went out of my it was like back to back to back I said what is going on and it was the enemy because I was headed in the right direction and so if the enemy is fighting you and the enemy is resisting you that is your assurance and your confirmation that you are in the right place but we're going to pray and we rebuke the enemy hallelujah 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 amen he's only fighting you because he sees where you're headed and God has placed you here and God has placed you there in prayer and that's where you're supposed to be and because that's where you're supposed to be that's why he's fighting you but the devil is a liar and we pray right now father in the name of Jesus I come against the enemy right now the blood of Jesus is against you this is God's child and she belongs to God every tormenting spirit I speak peace to her heart 
and we bind the handwork of the enemy right now. We rebuke the devourer for your name's sake. Everything that is not like you, we bind you right now. Take your hands off of this woman. Get away from her. Get from around her. She belongs to God. And I pray right now, the power of the Holy Ghost overshadow this woman right now. From the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. When the spirit of the Lord, the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. And we lift up a standard against him right now. Lord, that you be her strength right now. Lord, they rebuke the enemy, every spirit that is not like God. And God, your spirit is covering her right now. God, you're protecting her and you're keeping her. And everything that the enemy said is a lie. Every promise that you made is yea and amen. And we choose to believe the report of the Lord. And so I thank you right now. I thank you for the peace of God that's flooding this woman right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I thank you for the peace of God that is overshadowing this woman right now. The peace of God that passes all understanding. The peace of God that is God in her heart. The peace of God that is God in her mind. The peace of God that is flooding her soul right now. And we thank you for peace. I 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 thank you for everlasting peace. In the name of Jesus. And it is so. It is so. It is so. In Jesus name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. And we thank you right now. And Sister, Bro, Sister Rojas, you walk in that peace. You abide in that peace. And if anything else tries to come and come against that peace, you say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You stay in that place. Glory to God. Amen. We're getting ready to go home. Amen. Just believe. Amen. Look at that person next to you and tell them, say, just believe. Amen. Look at the person on the other side. Tell them, say, just believe. Just believe. Just believe. All things are possible to them that believe. Father, we thank you right now. We thank you for your word that has gone forth in this place. Give us to believe you for the impossible because you can do the impossible in this place. All things are possible to them that believe. Help our unbelief. Father, build our faith in this place like never before to believe you for the impossible thing, to believe you for the improbable thing because we know that you will not fail. And Father, as we dismiss from this place, but from never from your presence, be with us, lead us, guide us, keep us, cover us until we come together again. It's in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed. Amen. Remember, wear your t-shirts next Sunday. Amen. We're going to come and thank God for his faithfulness for our last Sunday in this building. Amen. God bless you. People are slipping away. Economy's down. People don't get enough pay. But as for me, all I can say is thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. There are 
folks without home, living out in the street. The drugs on them, yeah, that's too high. They, they just can't be. I'm saying, okay. That's a little bit lower, I'm saying. But what is it? Uh, tragic tragedies on commonplace. All kinds of diseases. People are slipping away. Trump and run. Get her nothing. But as I don't all I can say is thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. There are burglars and robbers. No place seems to be the same. Wait, muggers and robbers. No place seem to be safe. But you've been my protection every step of the way. And I want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Thank you, outdoors. No shoes and no clothes. All left alone without a friend. Just another number with a tragic end. But you didn't see fit to let none of these things be. It ain't by your power. Keep on keeping me. And I want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for 